Hey there, welcome in that video tutorial which will explain how to convert a Mixamo character as a golem character. So right now I'm on uh, the Mixamo website and I just uh, picked one of the characters I liked and it appears into that viewport there that you can play with and what I want to do is just download a version of this character. So regarding the format, I've got the choice between FBX, FBX for Unity or Colada. So as I want to open it within Maya, and I don't really care about Unity materials, I'll just go with FBX. And regarding the pose, I want to make sure that I'm using the T pose because when I'm defining a new character within Golem, I want to make sure I'm having a neutral pose uh, to define the Golem character. So I'm gonna download that file here. That's gonna set me up with an FBX. And uh, when it's gonna be good, I'll be open to I'll be able to open that FBX within Maya. So I can just uh, use the file import button within Maya and I end up with the character. It has a skeleton here on which are skinned a couple of meshes. So that's exactly the kind of stuff we like. And if I want to make a golem character out of this character, I need to use the golem character maker, which is that icon there. So the only button which is available um, when I'm opening that tool is load the selected skeleton. So I want to select the skeleton first and press that button here. It's going to parse the skeleton and it's going to ask for what the up axis and the front axis. So I, I can check those. So up axis, front axis, those are correct. And it has loaded the whole area key here. So then I can decide what's the detection mode because when I'm creating a new character, I want to make sure that I'm having a neutral pose. So when I import a character within Golem with the character maker, I end up with a locator, which is here. And let's increase maybe the size of the bone so it's maybe more obvious what's going on here. Uh, let's put a really high value there. Okay. So yeah, this is how my character looks like and how it's been detected so far. So I can either detect the neutral pose by using the joint orient information, which is the data which is stored within the bone. So that's the joint orient here or I can um, read it from the current values, which is what is displayed within the viewport or within the bind pose if a bind pose is defined. But here apparently no bind pose have been defined on that character. So what I want to use is the joint orient, which is usually where the T pose is stored. So I'm kind of happy with that. I'm having a neutral pose being detected and now I need to specify to Golem, how does the character look like? So I've got that, that huge space here where I can drag and drop nodes, but Obviously we got a tool here, which is called auto compute skeleton mapping, which can go through the whole skeleton here, the whole hierarchy and try to figure what is what. So it has detected that my characters has a spine I key, which goes from spine node to spine two. It has a right arm, which goes from right arm bone to right hand. It has a neck, uh, it has a couple of legs with a toe and a couple of fingers as well. And if we take a look within the viewport, we can see the character appearing and wherever there's an A key chain, there's one of those white planes which shows in which direction does the limb fold. And if I want to make sure that those fold properly, I can use the check button here to simulate the folding of all the, the, the I key chains. And I can see that my legs are folding properly, my arms are folding properly, my neck, my spine. And uh, maybe if we get closer to the finger and maybe if we change a bit this, um, and then get closer. I can see that my fingers do not fold properly. Uh, they all should fold uh, and I have an IKEA planes going upward and here it's going in really random direction. So if I want to fix that, so this is my right end, I need to go into my right end node and uh, that's my blue part of my IKEA limb. So I can go into the blue part there and I can fix those. So I can just change this until I figure something which I do like. So it looks like, yeah, okay, it's folding from upward. So it looks like the value I'm looking for is Z. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for all fingers. So I want to align all my fingers, make sure that they are all folding into the same direction, so which is good. And I can go into my left hand and do something similar. So I'm going to my left hand here, the blue part and probably as it's the opposite end, I want to have the opposite value, which is minus Z. 
So I can just click on the button until I figure a value which I really like, or I can just right click and uh, go into the edit IK normal plane and I'll be able to type any value here. But um, usually you can just use the predefined choices you're having and uh, you're always finding something which looks like what you want. Um, oops, here we go again, minus. Okay, great. So now my fingers looks proper, my arms looks proper. So everything has been defined properly for the skeleton here. And I'm good regarding the skeleton part. Uh, then I need to define how does the geometry of my character looks like. So I'm going to switch into the geometry tab. And um, we're not having much variation here. Uh, the Mixamo character are made in such a way that um, they don't allow to have multiple versions of uh, geometry for a top or of, um, of uh, genes. So usually what you get in terms of variation is a texture variation you can define yourself, but in terms of geometry, you don't get much. So what I'm going to do is just drag and drop a group here. I connect that to my character node, select all the meshes which compose my character, and select my asset group here and press that button, which says that you want to import the geometry from Maya. And it's going to reference every single mesh you've been selected, every single shading group which is attached to it, every single shader which is attached to that. And um, you're just basically saying that your character is made of all those meshes. And once again, as we don't do any geometry variation here, we don't need to deal with much more than this. Um, I'm kind of okay with that. So last step consists in exporting that geometry into a Golem file format. So we know how, how that geometry deforms and we can use that outside of Maya when we render that. So I'm selecting my character node here. I'm going to ask to export this. So I want to use the GCG file format, which is way faster. And I'm going to save that as Markon GCG. So it's going to compute the B-box for me, et cetera. And I want to save, so that was the geometry part of my character. Now I want to save the uh, characterization part of my character, so the skeleton and the geometry. So I'm going to save this once again as a character file. So now it's been saved. And if I take a look at my... Um, Two different files, I've been saving a GCG file which con contains the geometry and the GCHA golem character file which contains all the retargeting information, the skeleton, the geometry version. And uh, we're done. So we can just check if that character looks okay when we do a simulation with that. So we can create like a really quick simulation. So create an entity type, load that GCHA within it. Um, as my scene, so you can see the character here um, is way more bigger than the grid and by default within Golem we figured that one grid unit is a meter. Uh, so here obviously my character has been made as centimeter. Uh, so I can resize the character if I want to, but if I just want to keep the same scale I can go into the crowd manager and say my unit here is going to be centimeter and every time I'm going to create a new tool uh, it's going to take that data into account. So I can make a grid, uh, specify what's going to be the radius of my character, try to approximate this properly, and um, change maybe the distance a bit, change the orientation, and press create. And if everything goes well, I should get my characters popping uh, as now golem characters. So they got the materials being assigned properly, they got all the meshes version being assigned. So we are good with that. And we can even... As we've been defining the skeleton, we can even play any animation on that character and let the golem motion retargeting do the job. So I can grab any motion for we having from the package, let's say the walk normal animation, maybe randomize the start frame a bit and just play that. And now I'm having my Markham character, depending on the size they're having, they're playing that walk normal animation being retargeted on them. And uh, now I'm good. So um, I hope it makes sense and uh, see you into the next video.